So, <laughs> it was about two and a half years ago. My friend Matthew Chase Daniel was doing a series of photo essays about artists in their studios. He came by and uh, shooting me in my mess of a studio. But we happened to be old friends, and I had an idea I wanted to bounce off of him. I have this, um, it's a travel trailer. It's a, called a casita, and it's a miniature Airstream, basically, made of fiberglass. My idea was to uh, convert it into a, a place to show miniature paintings out on La old Las Vegas Highway. So that all, you know, all the locals and tour, well, on your way to Harry's, you could stop by there. And, <laughs> and maybe I'd be sitting in front in a rocking chair or something, just be another one of the Santa Fe characters. Well, he also, at that time, had seen something that was very intriguing to him. It was a flatbed truck, 25 foot flatbed truck. Well, machine head that we all are, and certainly us guys are. I had to go see this. And so Matthew took me out to see it, and it was classic. It was beautiful. It had, you know, the hood that opens like this. <laughs> Gorgeous. But we realized in looking at that, it was just too big. And my casita actually, all in all, was just too small. So we had this kind of a Cinderella quandary. We went to the Oracle, who took us to Craigslist. <laughs> who took us up to Colorado Springs. And we were out driving through the streets of Colorado Springs, making a corner here and a corner there, and then I saw this shining beacon, <laughs> this big old truck. And I know it didn't happen, but it could have. I saw, I saw 10,000 lights, head beams going, I heard 5,000 car, car horns honking. And, it was our muse. <laughs> three months later, we in the three months, it took us to retrofit the band so that we could stand up in it. Uh, also, we got an IRS number. We got two insurance numbers. We got a business number. We got a CRS sales tax. We just, I never had so many numbers in such a short amount of time. <laughs> Three months, we were ready to open. What we did was feature works on paper by New Mexican artists. Since that time, we've had about 30 shows. All of them are thematic. The shows could be and have been uh, evocations of reverence, the art of the chair, the reprocessed photograph, the place where folk art and contemporary art meet. I've had quite a, a series of uh, works that have been very well supported locally in the media. But more importantly, we were able to park the van anywhere we wanted. So the city streets were ours except around the plaza, of course. <laughs> we parked in front of grocery stores and coffee shops, restaurants, schools, the art museum on occasion, <laughs> and where Dominic saw us on Canyon Road. We found that this was a great way to reach out to the community, to educate and challenge them, to get them more involved in art, to get them to realize that art is not this elite experience, to be not so afraid of the white walls of the gallery and the museum. Well, as, as interesting and fun and this was, winter was approaching. And you all know how cold it can be in Santa Fe in the winter. Let's hope it continues to be cold like that. Well, at any rate, we had to come up with something. And what we came up with was to put a sheet of glass in the back of the van, invite artists to do installations, which is a form of art where you utilize the space, fill the space with objects that uh, are the expression, the ultimate expression that the artist wishes to, to reveal. It's not often that people get to see these, except maybe in store windows, but that's to sell stuff. We weren't selling anymore. 
but we were exhibiting. This was met with great, great um, support we got in the New York Times and ultimately all kinds of magazines and blogs all over the country. We realized we wanted to take it even a step further. And how more, what other ways can we reach out? Perhaps to go past the van. A friend of ours grew the largest pumpkin in the history of New Mexico. <laughs> we had to do something with this. <laughs> we did something, we did a still life. Something that calls to mind a sculpture or the history of art. It also calls, it also points out that the dedication and focus of somebody, not necessarily an artist, but it's a very artful thing to have this kind of focus. So in this case, we're even expanding the notion of what art is or what art can be. We did another thing that I thought really was very successful. We were invited by Art Street, which is uh, uh, an arts project for homeless people. And uh, we invited them to show their work on the inside of our van. And then during the course of the day, we went to six different locations and they read their poetry. It was a great way for the community to reveal itself to the community. And these were a different kind of community, but it is our community. We also came up with the idea of doing performances like dance or video uh, performance pieces were integrating work with video puppetry. Uh, then, you know, I don't remember the time frame of this, but Matthew was driving his son to high school, and he saw this sign. We knew we had to do something with this sign. <laughs> what we did was we invited all any poet to submit their poetry, and we decided to put a haiku on either side of that sign. We asked Joan Logie, who was the poet laureate of Santa Fe at the time, to select 32 poems. We moved this sign around to 16 different locations throughout the entire summer. Among the people that we uh, showed on the sign were Pulitzer Prize winners, high school student, a lawyer who had never been published before, and we published a book as a result of this, of this show. Of the, well, I guess it is a show. Um, then we were asked by Site Santa Fe, which is our contemporary art museum here, to uh, come up with a show, uh, something to go with their show. And uh, what we did was we converted our van into a, uh, a portable photo studio. We invited anybody to come, but what they had to do was bring an object that was of significance to them. I think the most poignant object might have been the, the can filled with the ashes of this woman's friend. We would give the photo portrait to the person who participated, and then we would put a portrait on the van. We had 566 people participate in that in 10 days, 11 different locations. So I guess in closing, I want to just ask a question. What would it look like if we thought of art less as a commodity and more as a service for the common good? How can we sustain it? How can we keep it going? I want to also point out that what we did here is nothing that couldn't be done in every city in America. And actually, for that matter, you don't necessarily need a step van. I mean, you could do it on a tractor or a, t a little red wagon. You could do it, uh, uh, well, in the back of your car. You could do it most anywhere. <laughs> Thank you.